All right, I was gonna make a video real quick. I've had some people uh, ask me about bearing clearance and how I check it. People have noticed I don't use plastic gates and I think they think that uh, I'm just not checking this. But here's how I was taught. This is a micrometer. This is in inches, not millimeters, but you can convert millimeters into inches. Uh, what we're gonna do is measure our journal first. And we got a, a good measurement there. You wanna hear a little bit of a squeak when you drag that uh, micrometer over there. And our measurement is uh, 2.144, so it's two inches. So what we're gonna do next is take the uh, telescopic gauge and we're gonna check the uh, rod. We had the uh, bearing in the rod. We had the rod torqued down. We're gonna take this and take a measurement. Uh, we put this in here, undo the uh, lock, relock it, and uh, now we've got the bearing measurement. Now we take the bearing measurement over to here and uh, you measure the difference. Now this is gonna be hard to do with one hand. I'll try to set this in here and uh, unlock this. Turn that baby in. And uh, we have two thousandths on the bearing clearance on this. So uh, that's how I check it. Uh, micrometer, telescopic gauge, you can use a bore gauge if you have one. Is uh, probably more accurate, but these seem to be pretty good for me, you know, within a half thou anyway. So uh, it's showing two, so it's, you know, Probably more like, you know, a little over two, but two's good with me. I like two, two and a half. Uh, somebody asked me a question on the SR20 motor. Uh, all of them are two. Uh, we had the one bearing that went bad on the crank. I took the crank and had it polished and had the rod resized, and that one's uh, three. So we picked up the thousandths on the bearing clearance on that one. But uh, they don't make any plus bearings, so we're going to go with it, and I think we'll be fine. I usually set the race stuff up a little on the loose side anyway, so... Uh, this is a street motor. We're gonna build another motor for the bus. Uh, I'm not happy with the power of the single port, so we're gonna go uh, with some dual port heads so we can put some carburetors on there. I'm gonna put some uh, duals on, and I don't wanna, I don't wanna pay $200 for an intake manifold when I can almost build a motor out of uh, my parts for that. So I'll just go with the Cadrons and uh, go with some dual port heads. I uh, have these stock heads up here. I think I'll finish up these heads. I was doing these for uh, Johnny. And uh, Johnny Mark's got a bunch of heads. So he's doing his own thing now. And uh, probably run this over and uh, see if I can get it machined out for a 92. If I can do that, we'll put a 2110 together. And if not, we'll just go with a Super 1600. So uh, machine work is hard to get done in Florida, you know, without sending the heads off. And I want to try to make the... Uh, South Carolina race next weekend, Orangeburg. So that's uh, this race. I was gonna drive the bus up there and enter it in the car show. Not racing the car this year. So uh, sort of just gonna let that uh, sit in the back. Got some plans for that though. It's not like it's uh, not anything happening with it. I went to the uh, other guys, the Volkswagen meet last night up there in Orange City and uh, there's some guys up there that think they're fast. So, uh, yeah, this is coming to a street near you real soon. And uh, we're going to see how fast all these cars are. But uh, back to the bus motor. That's uh, what we're planning. Uh, the Super 1600, I usually go with the uh, C35 scat cam. And uh, that requires uh, a couple things. Uh, you know, if you're building that kind of motor, you have to buy the uh, camshaft. You have to buy an aftermarket bolt-on gear straight gear or uh, you know uh, conventional helix depending on what noise you want in the motor there's our scat cam back there a c35 and uh, of course you know you have the chance of wiping the cam out and uh, all that stuff and the things that you have to do when you put the cam in there uh, what I was thinking about on this motor since I haven't done this with you guys yet is take a set of high lifts and uh, use those instead of the camshaft. Uh, these are a set of uh, 1.5 burr rockers, really sweet. Uh, you know, you don't have to have burr rockers. You can buy them from Bug Pack or uh, CB Performance. The burr rockers are $1,000 for a good use set, and uh, you can get a set of CB or scats for like in the 260 
uh, some of the other companies offer them a little cheaper. I noticed when uh, Musty One did his bus that he has high lift rockers on it. So it's a, it's a good way to pick up some power. Uh, you can usually pick up about 40, uh, 40 points on the cam. So, you know, if you have a 400 lift or a 380 lift cam, you know, you can add 40 uh, inches to that or inches of lift, however you want to put it. So uh, we might try that, the rocker arm thing uh, with a stock cam and uh that's pretty pretty uh good power if you're going to keep the power under 4000 rpm right at you know the stock cam is pretty hard to beat and uh, when you incorporate some high lifts it makes it uh, a real sweet ride so that's where we're at i'm going to run one of these heads to the machine shop real quick before i get on with the six, super 1600 and uh uh you know, I'd have to get into the aluminum case and the 82 crank here with the H-beam rods and stuff. Uh, I'd be a pretty stout bus motor, but uh, I'm not above putting it in there. Uh, I don't think anybody's going to buy that motor just because of the economy right now. So there's not too many people that want to buy a 82 stroker motor. And, uh, you know, they're about $7,000 once you get it all finished and put together after you buy the case and crank and the rods and the flywheel and the carburetors and the exhaust and all that stuff it adds up real quick so we're going to try to go the 1600 route uh it's more economical and uh it's more suited for selling the bus uh i would have to raise the price of the bus quite a bit if i put the uh, stroker motor in there so that's where we're at uh, i've dug up a couple cams uh, like i said i got two sets of heads here i got this crank assembled the other night uh, i got a bus case here uh, bus case a couple people wanted to know what the difference was uh between a car and a bus and uh, if you have an early bus uh pre-68 uh it's not really a problem your mounts are uh, on the transmission like a car it has actually like a saddle uh like darren's bus musty one uh bus like mine 68 to uh probably 72 71 was the uh, split year when they went to the type 4 motor takes a mustache bar and the bar bolts to these uh, bolt holes right here so you have to have a provision on the case to bolt them out the other option that some guys use is this setup where you take uh, this plate and this mount and uh, on a stock case here's a I want to show you how this works so you can understand completely what they're doing here Here's a car case. Here's a car case. And, uh, you know, there's there's not a lot of different engineering into the uh, the beef of the case. You know, I mean, the case itself, the unit itself is pretty close to the same thing. It's just the mounting provisions on the case. So we have the bus case here with the uh, mount holes here, here, and at the bottom underneath the oil pump, you'll see a little boss and that's where our bar bolts and you'll notice on the car case it has no provision for any of that so uh, put it back together here try to uh, it's not going to happen because this is a nice tight case so i'll just have to uh, use your imagination but imagine an oil pump being in there and the typical oil pump isn't flat this is the uh oil pump cover that they sell on this uh, bus mount kit and I really do not like to do this and I'll show you why in a minute but what they do is they uh, employ this flat pump cover and then they take this bad boy and this bolts on right here like so and uh, you have your holes to bolt your uh, mount and now you can put a bus uh, bug motor into a bus but what happens is it hangs all the weight actually goes like this it goes like this but uh the case halves are spread apart too far for me to show you how it really goes but anyway this bolts on top of this flat cover and uh is supported off the four oil pump studs and this bottom uh bolt hole here holds all the weight of the engine and the transmission so it's a great idea in theory but what happens is is the pump is not made to support the weight of the motor and this cover you can see where the uh weight of the motor has uh 
push this cover into the oil pump gears and that's the uh, the scarring you see right there and that's typically what you see when you pull one of these off uh, unless you make provisions to clearance the oil pump gears and take a little oil pressure away from the motor because anytime you shorten the gears it's going to make less pressure and your clearance gets larger between the cover and the pump gears uh, your pressure decreases so you have to do a little of that if you're going to use this setup or you get this and it can seize the pump up and cause the motor to uh, seize up from the pump stop working it'll actually grab the gear and spin the gear on the shaft those gears are just pressed on those shafts they're not welded so uh, if enough heat gets in it and the gear stops against something the shaft will turn and the gear will just sit there so that's how the uh, bug and the bus mount works I don't really care for that I take those off a lot I pull these out a lot and I find the same problem every time with the oil pumps and a lot of times you know the pump stops working and the motor blows up so we don't want any of that nonsense we're gonna go with the bus case and that's why bus cases cost a little more than a bug case you know they have this provision and it eliminates you from using the the, the Mickey Mouse mount so so that's where we're at with that and uh, had to clean the shop up I went through this cabinet emptied the cabinet out and tried to uh, reorganize this a little bit and uh, still not very organized I just got too much stuff so I'm gonna start assembling some of these motors I got all kinds of parts laying around I'll try to get everything into an assembly but uh, that's where I'm at so I thought I'd make this video for you guys hope everybody's having a great day it's a uh, it's a John Kerry day today here full puffy clouds and uh, you guys make the best of your Friday and uh, we'll turn this back on when we start to assemble that motor <laughs>